Hey guys, sorry that I'm a little late with the video. I have a lot of things going on right now and I have some announcements to make in the end of the video. So if you're interested how it will continue with the channel, just stay, um, stay with me till the end of the video. Okay, enjoy the analysis. Already in the first episode of Attack on Titan, the mother of the protagonist gets eaten and dozens of people lose their homes and become refugees. And this catastrophic mood continues throughout the next episodes. One dark event follows the other and I think the show partly works so well because of the same mechanism that makes people stop and stare when an accident takes place. It is the shock that awakes a curiosity about how things will turn out. Things that are far more horrible than everyday life always have had a strong effect on humans. This, plus the absolute incredible animation, catches the viewer tightly. But no good story can live only by shocking the viewer. To keep the audience stick around, you need to bring variation to the field. And this is where Levi comes in. He is the personification of that necessary relief. Within all the despair, he, with his outstanding abilities, is the one who brings light to that dark place. His entrance into the story switches the whole mood by finally giving the viewer some hope for improvement of the situation. So, just by his function as the hope bringer, he is likely to have a strong effect on the viewer. And as a matter of fact, he is one of the most popular characters of the series. But it is not only his abilities that make him so likable. He is actually a very complex and good written character, which I want to examine now. Let's start with his cleaning issues. He enters the story as the very best soldier around and as humanity's only hope. He shows no respect for higher-ups and has this ultimate pro-vibe to him. And the first time he appears in a more private context, he wears that cleaning lady headdress and is about to polish the whole shelter where his unit stays. At first, this might seem a little off character. Let's look on how that fits together. Him cleaning his blades on the battlefield and polishing the accommodations seems like obsessive compulsive disorder. The dynamics behind the urgent need to clean everything within OCD is the need to be in control. One needs to experience his self-efficacy by directly influencing one's surrounding. Cleaning is an easy way to do so. By cleaning, one experiences an immediate effect on the world by transforming an object from one state, in this case dirty, to another state, in this case clean. So, obsessive cleaning is a subconscious attempt to be in control. Let's go back to his professionalism. The need to master an ability completely and perfectly is as well an indicator for the need to be in control. By mastering something perfectly, one does not depend on unreliable factors as other humans anymore. Nothing is left to chance by such individuals. So him being a cleaning maniac is not of character, but in fact is very consistent to his professionalism. Both roots on the need to be in control. But why does he want to be in control so much? In the work with obsessive compulsive disorder patients, one important step is to find out why the person has a such strong desire for controlling things. The trigger for such behavior often can be a situation when one was not in control of certain events. When we look into Levi's background, it gets clear why he has such control issues. Things were always beyond his control. First the death of his mother, then him being abandoned by his father, and then his loss of both his precious stuck friends who were like his second family. As a reaction of life constantly getting out of hands, he develops the need for controlling life as good as he can, which manifests in his cleaning obsession. 2. His size. His size as well is a good fitting feature. It is common that small men compensate the height by achieving greatness in their profession and in personality, because they have no greatness height-wise. This phenomenon is called the Napoleon complex. 3. Anti-social and cold behavior Another characteristic thing to Levi is his cold and disinterested attitude. But is he really that cold? 
In several examples we see him caring for his comrades. In the female Titan expedition, he, in comparison to Erwin, tries to keep the casualties as low as possible and tries to not lose any man. When they return home after the expedition and the father of Petra, who just had died, approaches Levi, he seems paralyzed about the loss. He is highly irritated when he hears that Titans might be former humans. He is shocked that he might have been killing humans all the time. It is stated at another point that he highly values human life. So is he actually warm-hearted and caring? Psychology would say he is. My professor told us once that when we face someone who has high developed empathic skills and cares a lot for others, chances are high that this person had to endure a lot of pain in the past. Someone who knows how it is to be truly miserable develops strong sensors for the feelings of others. Because one knows severe pain, one does not want anyone else to experience it. Levi had to endure immense amounts of pain, which by what my professor said must mean that he is an empathic person. When we look on how he cares for his comrades, that assumption is confirmed. So, if he is actually compassionate and warm, why does he seem so cold and antisocial then? Here are a few possible explanations. Trauma Losing your mother as a child and sitting next to her corpse, being abandoned by your father and then losing your only true friends one after the other must cause unimaginable pain and this carves you as a person obviously. Such events in a person's life lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, which comes with depression, anxiety and suicidal tendencies. Levi's suicidalness, by the way, is one of the things that make him so good as a soldier. He has nothing to lose and he seems not to fear his own death. Because fear is not blocking him, he can fight so outstanding. His overly traumatic experiences make him different to others, obviously. Someone with such heavy pain naturally must have problems with carefree and social situations and relating. Migration That he lived in the underworld all his life and migrated to the surface world only when he was an adult already is another fact to consider when speaking about his antisocialness. No one is allowed to migrate from the underworld to the surface, so after he lost his two friends who have migrated with him, he is the only one left of his kind. The place where you grow up carves your habits and your culture. Being in a place where everyone has a different culture and different habits than you, and you have no one to share your humor and your culture with, is surely another burden that isolates a person from everyone else. Depth Through facing problems, a character gains depth. Levi experienced numerous problems, therefore I assume that he can't be a shallow person. What does that mean for his social behavior? A big part of communication runs by certain rules. One has to pretend to some amount to feed the small talk and to socialize. But the deeper the person, the more difficult it is to chat about banalities that one actually does not care about. This is why often the most interesting people are loners. Conditioning Man is a creature of habit and this also goes for emotions. If someone grows up in pain, the pain becomes the normality. One simply does not know that there can be a different state of mind. And this seems to be the case for Levi as well, judging by his background. Broken people of that kind tend to attract people because people feel the depth and authenticity in them. The broken people though have big difficulties to open up and connect because they simply do not know how it is to be happy and carefree. So this were possible reasons for his cold and antisocial attitude. Let's look on another important fact to understand his personality better. 4. Circumstances We must not forget the circumstances. Not only his past was traumatic, but he still is living in this hell. It is common that psychological issues like PTSD and depression get worse only after the war is over. While the crisis is still present, everyone has their shit together and is focused at the goals at hand. 
For instance, it was a common phenomenon that survivors of concentration camps who have so strongly fought for their lives committed suicide after being freed. After returning home after such traumatizing experiences on the verge of death, it is difficult to live a simple and happy life. And Levi is not in a going home and building a life phase yet, because they still are fighting their fight. This is why his goal carries him and allows him to function. His dedication to Erwin is his only sense left. Levi is an accurately written character, which is probably why he is so popular. He matches real-life people of that kind very well. People who have nothing tend to be the best at their professions, since this is the only way to verify their existence. He has only Erwin, so he puts all his energy into his mission and becomes humanity's strongest. But at the same time, he seems to be humanity's most traumatized as well. Mikasa has a similar desperate energy, but she still has Eren as a stabilizing factor at least. Levi has only his mission. And as a closing fact, let's look on his popularity. His traits speak to all kinds of different people. He is reliable, decisive, successful and keeps a cool head in stressful situations. This is what many people find highly desirable. At the same time, he probably as well appeals to people with a helper syndrome, because Levi is someone who really needs to be saved, at least mentally wise. So let's all dream about saving and comforting him, because it is better to project this unhealthy need on a fictional character than to live it in real life. Stay away from the social cases, girls. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. I got in uh, a university for a master's program um, outside of my country, so I have to move, and this is why I have a lot of things going on right now. And this is why I don't know how how it will continue with my channel, but actually I love it and I want to continue doing things. Um, but probably it won't be at least in the next time, because then I will also have a lot of things to do with my uni. It won't be uh, so often and yeah. But um, always when I have time I sit and do these videos because I really like doing it and yeah. Okay. So um, I think about maybe, I don't know, changing the topic a little bit, maybe just sharing something that I learned from my psychology studies and something like that. Okay, so enjoy your week.